Menorca, a tiny island in the western Mediterranean, is filled with ancient stone ruins. We'll be examining some of the more bizarre, strange, unusual, and gigantic stone ruins, getting drone shots of them, and trying to come up with an idea as to what in the world were they doing with these structures. Stay tuned, Sal Trento, Mysterious Places on Menorca. A number of years ago, I spent about seven years excavating this one of the most unusual sites in the world. It's called a taula which in Spanish means a table. About two to 3,000 years ago, the people on this island built these massive taliots. That's that large stone, it's called a watchtower. And right next to it is this T-shaped structure. With a team of several dozen archeologists, we spent seven seasons excavating this very peculiar structure. As you can see, there's an entranceway and there's a soil mark, we pulled out all the stones and debris and found some rather incredulous stuff. This was a sanctuary, an ancient sanctuary where they burned lots of fire, they sacrificed goats. In fact, at the base of this large stone tee, we found many, many, many feet of soil filled with goats, goat bones, particularly the knuckles of goat bones. The tawas were sanctuaries where people would come, they would light their fires, they would pray, and perhaps they also worship the bull god. As at all mysterious sites, the issue is why here? Why are they placed this very large, very incredible structure at this particular site? Well, years ago, I didn't have the technology, but now, 25 years later, I do. And I spent the last several uh, days, actually, ex uh, measuring the geomagnetic fields in this area and found that the Taula, this large stone tee behind me, resides on a very special power place, a place where the magnetic fields are very unusual. Now, it's not that they had these instruments back three, 4,000 years ago, but they probably felt differently at the site. When the magnetic field is anomalous or different, one actually starts feeling a little bit strange. It affects your pineal gland at the base of your thalamus. A number of years ago, I realized that the orientation or which way these towels face is positioned towards the rising full moon. On the last day of our excavation, we were packing up, and on that day, a little boy came by, his name was Juan, and he said, have you seen the well or the now de na patata? And I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. So the little boy just took me on a little walk over this uh, little fence here, this stone fence, to a standing stone that you can see in the distance there. Just beyond that little standing stone, above that stone fence in the bushes, is one of the most incredible structures I've ever seen. It's called the Well or Naul de Napatata. Napatata is the property location, the family's name. And beyond that fence is a hole that drops down 155 feet, of which the interior has a carved stairwell. I climbed down it and essentially had a mystical experience. It was absolutely strange. Again, this was during a hot July day, and I climbed down there, took some great photos, of which you can see in the next few sequences, and we really don't know why they did it this way. Now, there are wells all over the island, but not, nothing as large as this one. This was a very special one. This is Calas Covas, Cove of the Caves in Southern Menorca. It has been a place for boats to travel to and take sanctuary for thousands of years. Behind me are hundreds of caves, of which some of them have inscriptions. Now this is an intriguing tala. This tala was covered up by people sometime in the past, not the ancient ones, whereby they filled in the pillars around the tala with dry stone, enclosing it.
This is one of the earliest taulas on the island. Uh, it's rather crudely built. Uh, it is, again, part of a massive complex. These taulas were part of a huge complex of ancient villages. It was a center ritual site. These structures represent some mysterious deity. They would burn fires in front of the taula, uh, goats, sheep, and they would sacrifice them. We've seen butcher marks in some of the bones. But what exactly they were praying to is not really known. At another site called Teralba, we found uh, an ancient bull god, a bronze bull. We found evidence of Imhotek, who was a healer from Egypt at one of these sites. So uh, they seem to have been remnants uh, where people would come and pray and worship and sacrifice animals looking for something. But what exactly were they worshiping? Now the question of placement, why in the world did they put these towers, these table rocks, where they are? Now these table rocks were built around maybe 900 BC, almost 3,000 years ago. And they were built in a location where there already were people here, prehistoric people that built other structures. So whoever came in here built these structures in particular spots. I've done some measurements around this particular one. In fact, I've done measurements at every tower site that we visited. And I find that at the base of the tower, there's one set of geomagnetic field. When you go outside the complex into the general vicinity, as you can see, there's a, a completely different type of geomagnetic field. It's too close for, for chance to be there. And I find that the area over here, beyond where you see that wall, and the area behind this, over there, by, uh, beyond these rocks, are pretty much the same. What's different is right here within this ceremonial complex. That's why, that's where the actual magnetic fields get what's called aberrant, unusual, strange, different. My suspicion is that they were placed here because of that pattern. And probably the ancient shamans or whoever decided to build these structures felt differently here because they could have put this towel aside anywhere, anywhere in this field. If you look up here, there is what's called a taliot, a watchtower. That structure of stones that you see is much older than this sanctuary site. So the people that built this taula came into this area, saw this large, again called taliot, which means watchtower, and decided to put it right over here. It's the same pattern that we found in the other sites so far in this video. The people that built these tal these taulas chose these locations with a very specific objective in mind. This is the Taliot site, or watchtower. We're gonna to climb to the top, get a good view. This is the top of the watchtower, the Taliot. And as you can see, it has a spectacular view of the island. These people knew what they were doing in terms of location. <laughs> location, location, location. I've had the good fortune of actually excavating a few of these sites. But even with the excavation, seven, eight years worth, we still have very little to go on as to what exactly was happening. So we're faced with a problem. The problem is, what are these structures? Well, they're part of a large complex of people living here. What's amazing is that there are so many of these, again, 33 and 34 tallit sites, and lots of other ruins and taliots and so forth. This place was teeming with people. They all loved living here, apparently, and the population was massive. And the question is, why? What was so special about living in Menorca? Yes, it is beautiful. It's absolutely spectacular, but probably has something to do with the flatness of the island, the orientation of these structures, which way they faced, part of their religious worship, and they probably had a very good fertile soil in which to grow stuff, wheat, barley, definitely were doing that, and to shepherd different uh, uh, animals like sheep and goats, which clearly were brought in from elsewhere in the Mediterranean. So this was, probably a pretty good place to live. 
Unfortunately, a bit later, the Romans came in, took over, and Romanized the entire uh, structures. You'd find a lot of their pottery at some of the Taula sites, the sanctuary sites, and some of the large watchtower sites. And later on, you start seeing a bunch of other types of cultures coming in, sweeping through the island, getting rid of people, and so forth. Now, what's intriguing is that the Romans, who came here during the latter part, or the sort of the end of the Taliotic culture, they hired the young men as mercenaries to fight some of the wars against the Carthaginians, or the, the so-called Punic Wars. What was interesting is that the people that lived on this island had a very unique way of fighting. They used slings. In fact, they were the ancient slingers from, uh, in biblical terms, you actually read about these people. They would be forced to knock down a piece of bread that was in the crook of a, of a tree, and if they didn't do that, they wouldn't eat. So it was sort of like tough love. Learned how to do this from a very young age. These people apparently were brilliant in terms of slinging. They would be able to hit anything, any place, any time with the length of the sling. And they were hired out by the Romans. Now, they never accepted gold or silver for payment. That wasn't their thing. And that's why you'd never find any gold or silver in any of these structures or their burial sites and so forth. What they demanded payment. Now, we know this from the early uh, Greek and Roman writers who talked about this, this very odd behavior. They would uh, prefer to have wine and women. That was their payment, <laughs> wine and women. This is a beautifully constructed tala. You can see very clearly the form and the pattern. Now this one has a column next to it that leans over. And we don't think that was originally the case, the way it was designed. It probably was put up somewhere else and maybe sometime in the last uh, thousand years or so, maybe the Arabs who conquered this island came by and just positioned it in that way. But this is an anomaly having that little column on the side. But this structure is incredibly designed in terms of the carving ability of these people. Now remember, this is over 4,000 years of acid rain, yes, even back then, decomposing some limestone, but yet you can still see the squareness, the edges, the care that it took to make this thing. And this again is part of a horseshoe shaped enclosure that is typical of all Taula sites, whatever this shape meant to the ancients. Over the years, people have asked me, why are you so fixated on stones? In fact, on this uh, very recent trip, people have seen me videotaping and uh, measuring and so forth and saying, what's going on here? Well, I'm not fixated on the stones, I'm fixated on what they mean and why they were placed where they were. I mean, clearly it took a lot of effort, a lot of uh, uh, power to move these blo giant blocks of stone, some of the way up to 40 tons. They were deeply motivated to do something, so I'm interested in the motivation. But also with these Taulacites, what were they worshipping? What was so special about this island to put up these slabs of stone? Majorca, the larger island, is uh, nearby, uh, a day's sail away, and yet you don't find any of these Taulas, these flat table rocks there. You find these Taulias, these watchtowers, but nowhere do you find any of these Taulas. This island seemed to be relegated to a very special place in that early culture that we call the Taliotic. You can move rocks if you're motivated enough, if you have enough spirituality behind you or enough uh, oxen or horses or whatever, uh, you can move them. But why? Why bother? What's going on here? What's the deeper meaning behind these things? What was this culture doing? And in fact, Menorca was really an outlier. It was well, it was outside the regular traffic work of the Phoenicians and Romans. Later on, it became part of the pathway for Mediterranean traffic. But in the early days, people got here from where they came from and lived their life of solitude, essentially. And, but they had these strange rituals going on. And my interest has to do with what were they working on? What was the desire behind these people? What was the common factor? What, what social network brought them together to do whatever they did? Now we have a lot of anecdotes from the Greek and Roman writers. Some of them may be true, some of them may not. And uh, if you take them from face value, they were, these people were a pretty weird lot in terms of what they were doing. For example, uh, one of the uh, early Greek Roman writers mentioned that when someone got married on this island, they um, 
part of the, mar the, the prenuptial ceremony would be to have the, uh, the bridegroom, the man, have all of his relatives, again, this comes from the writings, sleep with the future bride prior to getting married. Now, is that true? Is that just uh, an exaggeration? Don't know, but that's what they all talk about. Actually, not just one writer, but many of them talk about this very peculiar custom. Now, the Romans were not uh, Puritans. <laughs> they, they were no slouches when it came to deviant sexual behavior. So, but yet this type of behavior caught their attention and they wrote about it, which may give credence to the story. These people were living in isolation for many, many, many years. Um, and they built up a culture that I find strange, odd, because there's no way to explain what they did. Now, even in the excavations that we've done, we find just the remnants of sacrifice, remnants of offerings, and so on. We don't know the language that they spoke. We don't know the complex ceremonies that clearly had to be involved in something of this nature. We have no idea. So my interest has to do with that stuff. It's the anthropological point of view. What drove these people and what kind of customs and rituals? Getting back to this island took a lot of time, planning, prep work, uh, logistics and so forth. I want to thank my two daughters for coming along with me and for helping out. They were marvelous assistance. Thank you, Rian. Thank you, Sarah. This is Sal Trento on the coast of Menorca for Mysterious Places. Until next time, take care. If you enjoyed this episode, give it a like, and do subscribe to the channel by pressing the button below. Until next time, Sal Trento with Mysterious Places.